Hello, Todd Clemens, Okeechobee Livestock Market, and here's your weekly market report. Wow, what a strange week. Um, over the weekend, we got to looking at the weather and the storm coming at us, and we didn't know what to do, whether we should sell cattle or not sell cattle. But as it turned out, down here in South Florida, around Okeechobee, it wasn't too bad. We were able to have our sales uh, pretty normal, but our runs were lighter. Um, over in Arcadia, they had more rain and weather than we did. They didn't have very many cattle. Lakeland had a few. Ocala ha hardly had any. Um, Columbia's power went out, but they were they managed to still sell cattle on a generator. They didn't have very many. Madison didn't have a sale. Um, I'm leaving somebody out, but I, uh, Sumter uh, Webster had a sale with a pretty decent run. Uh, so we got through the week. Um, some of us uh, had cattle, some of us didn't. It was just weird. This hurricane season thing, uh, it's, it's hard to make a call because people bring their cattle in on weekends for Monday sales. And how are you going to get the word out to people that you're not going to have a sale? Uh, it's just impossible. So um, anyway, we, we got through it. It was kind of strange. Uh, all of our buyers participated. You know, we do appreciate that very much. A lot of these guys were shipping cattle up north and uh, right into the to where the, the bad weather was, but they, they continued to participate and buy cattle. Uh, on the feeder calf side, there just wasn't a many, uh, wasn't enough calves around uh, for these buyers to buy truckload lots. And I think that had something to do with uh, with the calf prices. You know, they need numbers, and they've got to fill these semis up with 50,000 pound uh, loads. So, you know, when there's not enough of them, it's just very hard for them to to press and and uh, keep those prices up. Even though they were still still pretty good, they were off a little bit on the feeder calves, probably five to ten dollars. But all in all, we, we got through and people are picking up their checks and still pretty satisfied with, with what they're getting. Uh, I know these um, 500, 400, 500 pound calves are still bringing 12, 1200 or better, you know, and there's nothing wrong with that at all. But what did happen with this bad weather was it really spiked up the, the uh, slaughter classes. These cows and bulls, I tell you, this week here, when that, it was the highest cows and bulls I think we've ever seen. I'm going to show you right here on this market report on the cows we had uh, had a big a, a pretty good slug it was like 65 head of uh, oh pretty good medium medium flesh not the fattest biggest cows but they weighed 1246 um, and the average price was a dollar 49. That's the average. That price range was from 144 to 157 on cows, and on the bulls, it was even. Uh, I don't even think I have that. But as I recall, we had some bulls bringing up to 180. I think 178, 179 on big old bulls weighing 1,800 pounds. So that that was great. You know, for those people that did did have to sell and they brought cows and bulls in, man, they, they rang a bell with, the, with those prices. But I think that was weather related, uh, just short supply around an area. So don't expect that to hold up, uh, you know, next week. I would think it's going to come back down to a more realistic number. But we have been talking about the highest demand for beef is in the hamburger meat. And these other uh, cuts, uh, the retail prices are, have been really, really extremely high on the front end cuts. And I think there's, um, we're hitting some resistance from consumers uh, looking for bargains and they're buying hamburger instead of ribeyes, possibly. And there's a lot of pressure on the uh, box beef prices. And I think uh, somebody just told me here today, I think it was that they they looked at some meat in the meat counter there at Winn Dixie or Publix. One of them and uh, bone-in ribeyes, I think, were 14 something a pound. And I remember just a few weeks ago, I think I looked at some that were maybe 18, 18 dollars a pound. Um, so it's uh, probably probably dropping off on the retail end, and the packers are still behind the 
eight ball not making any money and having to give up a pretty good bit buying these cat cattle coming out of the feedlots. Um, futures were down last week. The stock market was down huge. I think it was Friday, one day last week. It was just bad off because they're talking about now we may be going into a uh, recession. And I don't know if that's coincidental with politics and uh, VP nominees and, and president nominees I don't know if that's related or not, but it all happened about the same time. Uh, so let's hope that this week these things get straightened out and we can get back to business at a normal level. But like I said, these calves are maybe off a little bit, but they're still bringing good money. And uh, so nothing's wrong with the, with the calf market, even though it was, was a little bit lower. Uh, what else is going on? School starts uh, back next week. Uh, there, boy, there were a lot of kids around here this week. I guess the storm had them all on the inside, but we had a big big uh, group of people here eating, uh, eating during the sale and they brought their kids with them and they've been working cows and it's good to see good to see all those cowboys and those little cowboys and cowgirls coming in here. So we got another generation of them coming along, which that's a good thing. Um, let's see, we're having a meeting tomorrow about this uh, animal disease traceability, the state tagging rule. Um, there's some pros and cons about that. And there's a lot of information being dis disseminated about whether it's something we need or we don't need. Um, you know, are we really ready for a, a national animal ID system? Do we have the technology in place? Is it something that we really need? Uh, what's going to help us find these any diseases out there that's better than what we've been doing now? So there's going to be some conversation about that this week uh, with the Florida Cattlemen's Association committee about this uh, state uh, tagging rule. So we'll see what happens there. We'll keep you posted. Uh, Producers Cattle Auction has a little sale tomorrow. Uh, it's only four lots, but there's four uh, good loads of cattle being sold tomorrow on Producers Cattle Auction. That sells at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. You can go to ProducersCattleAuction.com and tune in and watch that sale or tune in and see how those cattle do. Um, we had some high prices this week and on the calf side was uh, Ryan Kennedy from Vero Beach had a 210 pound calf that brought four dollars and 55 cents that calf was bought by dns and on the slaughter cow side a uh, family here that, that they've been, uh, been on this list before it's not their first time for the high price butler's bluff um, the butlers that's will and bob and them had a uh, cow that weighed 1100 pounds that brought a dollar 64. that's huge that cow was bought by Florida Beef. That's your market report. We appreciate you. Thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel. We'll keep the news coming. See you next week.